afternoon everyone uh, so i am very uh, very much happy to welcome you all for the afternoon session on frp strengthened rcc piles under cyclic lateral load uh, which is going to be delivered by dr k muthukumaran professor department of civil engineering uh, nit trichy so i am very much happy to introduce uh, professor k muthukumaran to the participants so as i said uh, he is currently professor at nit trichy He has obtained his PhD in soil structure interaction and marine geotechnical engineering from IIT Madras. He has published uh, more than 120 papers in international and national journals and conferences as well. He has completed five R&D projects, including ISRO Chandrayaan 2 mission project and 60 major consultancy projects in geotechnical engineering. And to his credit, Dr. K. Muthukumaran has published two patents. in moon soil which is a method for the manufacturing of highland lunar soil simulant he has also guided uh, eight phds five ms research scholars and more than 40 mtech students in geotechnical and allied research areas dr k muthukumaran is the founder chairman of indian geotechnical society of trichy chapter he is a member of technical committee of international society for soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering Professor K. Muthukumaran has been elected as member of IGS National Executive Committee for 2017-18. He is also an international advisory member of Soil Structure Interaction Group Egypt. He is an associate editor of Journal of Innovative Infrastructure Solutions and peer reviewer of various journals of ASEE, Elsevier, Springer, and Taylor and Francis. Professor K. Muthukumaran's area of research is in geotechnical engineering, which includes pile foundation. soil structure interaction geotechnics and foundations field instrumentation geotechnical physical modeling ground improvement and forensic geotechnical engineering he has received the dst young scientist award igs shrimati indra joshi biennial award and keynote paper award in the geomat conference 2015 which was held at osaka japan professor k muthukumaran has significant administrative contribution at nit trichy as a state officer associate dean planning and development member of buildings and works committee and member of board of governors of nit trichy and member of buildings and work committee iam trichy he has received many uh, awards in his uh, to his credit he has received nit trichy achiever award for research publications research projects maximum citations and consultancy projects he is also the recipient of bharat vikas award in year 2018 So I am very much uh, happy to uh, welcome uh, Dr. K. Muthukumaran for this session. So thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation. Now I am uh, handing over the session to Dr. K. Muthukumaran. Thank you very much for your nice introduction. Very good afternoon, all. I hope you had enjoyed uh, last few days related to. Earthquake engineering. At the outset, I really thank Professor Kumuda for organizing such an important event, and thank you so much for inviting me to give the talk related with the FRP strength and RC pile and cyclic lateral load. I hope I am audible to you. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Hope my PPT is visible. I hope everyone is able to see the PPT. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, fine. So the topic is FRP strengthened RC piles under cyclic lateral loads. It's a complete uh, laboratory and field study, uh, including numerical analysis. You can see towards the end, and it's a complete design procedure we have given for FRP strengthened RC pile. it's a part of my phd students work 
Dr. Murugan. I acknowledge him for this excellent work. Okay, just uh, so before going to the presentation, I'll just uh, uh, give a brief uh, overview over this file foundation. So basically, you're all very much aware of file foundation where normally we will be adopting file foundation where you have a severe lateral load and uh, axial load. Even though if your soil strata is capable of taking care of load, axial load, but sometime under lateral load, it may be a critical providing with a shallow foundation. And the places where your soil strata may be good, but still you may need to go for a file foundation or deep foundation provided where we are talking about environmental load, something like a very have a flowing water like a marine structures or a bridge construction where the expected discovered depth is significant as well. You have a huge lateral thrust due to the water, flowing water, especially the current force and wave wind forces. So, and moreover, these kind of uh, environmental forces are the governing one to decide about the type of foundation rather than the conventional one, what normally we practice. So in that case, we may, I mean, the suitable foundation system is a file foundation. But as we know that the foundation construction is not so easy, especially in the marine region or where you have a stagnated water, and especially since it, the construction is below ground, not a, not like a superstructure, where everything is visible, you can able to have a, a very good and proper quality control. But nevertheless, uh, doing under ground, it's always a challenging one. And especially when you have a severe environment, the challenges are much more. And uh, so in spite of that, we need to keep our foundation intact to, I mean, to satisfy the serviceability criteria for the particular section. And often we have a problem in even file foundation during the time of construction or during the functioning aspect, especially the nicking and bulging is a too important aspect will happen during the time of construction execution of file. And this particular topic is little more beyond that the conventional pile foundation, what we, I mean, so far what we were talking. And especially this topic, the strengthening aspect is uh, uh, chosen to mitigate certain issues related to the inefficiency in the pile capacity, inefficient the lateral resistance, and inadequate quality, what it has been provided in the earlier days. So by the way, this I have more than 100 slides. So uh, some places I may, may be a little rush. So which, I mean, those who, the well-known topics and the well-known procedure, I'll be simply skip. I'll concentrate more on the response aspect of the lateral loaded piles, especially the strength and the lateral loaded piles. 100 and, 100 and plus slides, and some places I may go a little faster. Please bear with me. But whenever you have any queries, any doubt on my presentation or in general, you can, uh, uh, I'm very well, you can uh, use the chat box. You can type all those questions. And of course, we have a discussion time towards the end. We can have a detailed discussion later. And if at all you want to interfere during the presentation itself, the organizers will take care of that part. Those uh, people can have the right hand, and uh, accordingly, the people, I mean, organizers can stop me and ask the question. So I'm happy to have the clarification then and there. Okay. So with that, we'll move to the uh, the topic. So basically, there are uh, many challenges we have, especially in general, of uh, civil engineering construction. And the challenges are much more in foundation. And still, it is complicated considering the deep foundation, especially the file foundation. And 
So in the beginning, I was emphasized necking and bulging. Of course, the bulging is not a serious issue as far as the strength concern. The only issue is you'll be having additional quantity of concrete, so it is maybe uneconomical. But uh, necking is a severe issue, serious issue against the pile performance. And especially the load carrying capacity will be severely reduced by the necking effect. So these two are the, uh, I mean, failures during happening during the time of installation. But after installation, sometimes we may have a problem related with the pile, the same. Uh, you can see that classically, you can see how it has happened. Your cover concrete has completely exposed to the reinforcement is exposed to the open and I mean environment and easily oxidation will take place that accelerate the corrosion of the pile concrete uh, steel. So finally, you'll be end up with a, a very reduced pile capacity or the pile may fail over a period of time. So this is a challenge. And especially when you talk about the marine environment, so you're all very well known that the marine environment is not a uh, steady state water level. It is always subject to fluctuation. And you know that during the tidal variation, often a particular zone is subject to wetting and drying process. So that zone, we call it as a zone of flash, flash zone. So the flash zone is very severe against the oxidation process because often you'll have a wetting and drying and that creates much more issues related to the corrosion of the pipe. And this is very dangerous against the steel pipe, but nevertheless, concrete piles also subject to danger, especially in the tidal variation. So we need to overcome this issue, okay? So you can adopt any method. You basically, you want to strengthen the pile where you have a severe, uh, deterioration has happened or where you have a reduction in the size or where you have a uh, complete rusted area. So basically we want to uh, retrofit that particular pile or we want to bring back the capacity of the pile to serve the purpose. And in addition to that, uh, loading itself create a lot of issues. And especially when you talk about uh, lateral thrust, and especially during the time of earthquake, yes, we are all very well known that the predominant force is the lateral force. And especially when you talk about the huge infra, uh, heavy infrastructure, uh, like a huge transportation infrastructure, and many times it is supported with the pile foundation with the very high lateral thrust. And we, we may have a lot of issues related with the shear cracks and flexural cracks in the concrete pile. So we want to address this issue. We want to strengthen this kind of pipes. If you look at this in a general scenario, uh, there are several sources of lateral loading. And uh, especially the seismic load is a very important aspect we need to consider. And with respect to the type of structure what you are dealing, you may need to consider all these uh, type of lateral loads or the part of lateral loads given in the slide. But often seismic is seismic needs to be considered with respect to the seismic zone what you are going to do the design, where you are going to do the construction. So some of the schematic uh, photographic view where classically what we are expecting the lateral load in the pile foundation. And sometimes pile swords are uh, used as a supporting system. And sometimes it may also be used as a supporting system for earth retaining. So this uh, you can see here. So it is a pile wall. Simply it is a retain the soil mass to facilitate the construction to the required place. And whenever we have a huge eccentric load, especially when you talk about the eccentric uh, structure. So this is a classical eccentric structure where you have a huge eccentric load. And basically, we need to design our foundations with respect to these loads. And other places where you can see the classical lateral soil movement. So not only that load is coming from the superstructure, but sometimes we may also have a load which is coming from the soil. Sometimes it may not be knowing. It may be some sometime below the ground level, so underground movement. 
So likewise, when you see any structures close to the coastal region or uh, river bank, subjected to such kind of lateral soil movement, so it is a classical lateral load. These kind of lateral loads are never been addressed in any of the codes. So it is uh, very, very important to do the proper analysis and get your uh, the load, additional load, what it is coming from the soil movement. It is not uh, neither created by the structural load are not induced by the pile movement in the soil. These kind of loads are purely with respect to the environmental variation, especially the slope movement. So these are all the additional forces which, has come, which are coming to the pile. So we need to uh, look at these loads and we need to strengthen your pile. If at all, these loads have not been considered during the time of construction. And the transmission towers is very well known that subject to uplift force and uh, lateral loads. So these are the areas where we need to really look at that lateral load design. And especially this particular component uh, strengthening. Strengthening nothing but something is weak in the existing structure. So that something is lagging. And especially when we talk about the pile foundation, the capacity is lagging. So the capacity is la lagging is because of various reasons. Probably the original design might have been done for a particular load intensity over a period of time. For a simple example, when you talk about uh, uh, the seismic zone, you are all very well known that the seismic zone, how oh, earlier it was five zones, now it comes only four. So one become two. So likewise, uh, two become three, some places, three may be four. So there is a change over a period of time, the codal provision has been changed. So if at all the design was done, we're considering the zone two, but the present case, present day, your two become three. That means obviously when you are talking about the zone three design requirements, it's obviously it's higher than the two. So when you design the such kind of design that has been done during the uh, earlier period, considered in the zone two, obviously present day it is not suitable. So you need to strengthen your structure because the structure is for considering the effect of zone three. And moreover, apart from that, you may have a several issues related with uh, uh, construction issues, related with uh, analysis, design, execution. So all these things might have created your structure, and especially I'm talking about the foundation, pile foundation, capacities, inadequate. You are not, uh, I mean, the present scenario, somehow your pile capacity has not been uh, reached to the required capacity, then you may need to go for strengthening of that pile. So this is the one particular technique what we have investigated how to use this FRP to strengthen your concrete pile to gain both axial as well as lateral capacity. If you look at the literature, we have a current status of the existing problem. So we are talking about pile. So what is the issue in the pile? What is the existing problem? Is it simply nothing but corrosion of your pile? Or as I mentioned, changing zone from one to two or two to three, there is a lack of capacity, persisting capacity. So first you have to have a detailed analysis on the present case of your piling system. Then you have to perform record of the pile after retrofitting. What purpose you are going to do, whether the select, uh, selected method will lead to have a complete serviceability condition. So will it completely solve the problem for a period of time for the intent life of the structure? So that you need to do a little bit analysis. And the conditions for the retrofitting work, OK, the selected method how far it is suitable for the problem specific you have to do a little bit analysis and
in the whether the particular method so these are the basic uh, things we need to keep in our mind before selecting a particular method and accordingly you have to because there are several methods available whether centering or retrofitting of any existing structure especially, especially the foundation pile foundation so where we try to attempt using this frp how this frp can have a uh, effect on capacity of this pile under cyclic load so conventionally if you look at that uh, pile strengthening process there are several methods available uh, some of them were practiced by many people and some of them are having some sort of limitations i mean doing such kind of practices having some limitations so basically what is the important aspect is the stiffness of the material since we are talking about the lateral load uh, anyway we have done the complete uh, research both axial as well lateral load and in the real foundation pile foundation we have concentrated more on the lateral load just for an instance you can just have a look of this particular picture this is your constructed pile where it is uh, this pile is subject to the lateral load it is obvious that the lateral resistance of this pile is if it is less than the applied load obviously you will be having a problem so problem in terms of the formation of cracks and finally the plastic hinges will form and finally the section will fail so that we don't want to see so we want to select a member such a way that the bending resistance of the pile supposed to be much greater than the developed bending of the pile so that is what basically we want to see so typically if you look at this scenario this is something nothing but your cantilever beam so you have a cantilever beam where the beam is subjected to the load at the free end somewhere you have a support and you know that you will get the maximum moment at the support it is a simple analogy you can uh, you can always uh, the lateral laterally loaded pile response can always correlate with the uh, simple the well known beam theory so in the cantilever beam you will be having a support one defined place okay you will have the support at the end on the end you will have the support it is a defined support and there will not, there will not be any deflection at the support okay but when you talk about the soil your pile is embedded in soil so soil is having n number of supports from the grain at the top level this grain will also provide a support against the applied load and the support is increased when you are going deeper and deeper so that means you can all you can other uh, in other words you can say that when you are going uh, deeper and deeper you know that, that the overburden pressure of the soil is going to be inc increased so the overburden pressure is nothing but the gamma times h if h is more the overburden pressure is more so when i am going deeper depth my overburden pressure is very much higher than the applied load okay so in that case what will happen the soil will not move so soil will try to move to certain distance beyond certain distance the soil movement will be almost negligible because the load which has been distributed to the soil to the significant depth beyond that depth the movement is almost insignificant i can say that the depth beyond that is almost like as acting as a support like a cantilever beam so the soil movement is it can directly related to the pile movement if there is a huge soil movement there will be a huge foundation movement pile movement so that is why you have a maximum deflection at the surface and the deflection is going to reduce with respect to depth because you have a very high resistance the overburden pressure and somewhere if you look at the same scenario your pile the movement will also lead to have a bending so that bending will increase with respect to depth and beyond certain depth as we know that the bending is the bending moment is 
load into distance at any point if you consider the load in until your beam load into the distance that is the bending moment so wl is the bending moment or v into l is the bending moment when you are going deeper and deeper your bending moment is going to increase but if you see here the bending moment will increase to certain depth beyond that the, the load distribution will be almost negligible so the bending moment will come back and it is almost zero beyond certain depths where you are getting maximum bending moment that point will be taken as a point of fixity or depth of fixity so conventionally we are assuming that somewhere you will get the maximum bending moment so where you are getting the maximum bending moment that bending moment point will be taken as point of fixity from that point onwards you can assume that the the pile is something like a cantilever beam what it means somewhere you have a maximum bending moment and you know that the where you are getting the maximum bending moment that particular section is critical against the bending resistance if at all your pile is not capable of having good bending resistance against the applied force load then the point will start to crack so that is the plastic hinge will form so that is a point of danger so if you strictly look at the overall scenario we no need to improve the pile throughout the depth because the load is distributed only a certain depth typically you can say that six times the diameter to 10 times the diameter you will have a typical load distribution as far as the lateral load concern vertical load definitely it will transfer throughout the pile and even you will have a n bearing resistance skin friction resistance but lateral load is only certain depth it is a depth of fixity so our focus is only up to the depth of fixity suppose up to the depth of fixity your soil is very weak obviously your resistance is very less so the pile can easily fail under lateral load so how do we strengthen that particular aspect so either you have two options one is you can increase the stiffness of the pile material or uh, you can increase the stiffness of the soil material so increasing the stiffness is obviously going to increase the resistance of the pile so it is very difficult to increase i mean uh, existing pile constructed pile increasing the whole overall stiffness of the pile may not be possible or feasible but sometimes it is very easy to have a improvement in the soil so you can have a additional fill which will be a well, well compacted fill so this fill will give additional resistance so that could solve the problem to some extent so this is one type of solution there are structurally we can also think of several methods as we know that only certain depth is critical against the bending so that particular depth either you can provide some sort of wings or you can have a increased the collar size or you can have a tapered section or you can have a beams connecting beams or you can have a short piles to certain depth so these are the some of the solutions you can very very well adopt this kind of solution and there are certain limitations with respect to executing this kind of uh, i mean options so by considering all those things we have plan to adopt frp so one of the very uh, user friendly material and having a very high tensile capacity and why this frp so you can see this particular slide advantages of frp it's a high strength to weight ratio so you can't imagine such a weight light very very light weight material providing huge tensile capacity and uh, you can imagine when you are using a uh, more and more weight you are basically increasing the dead weight of the structure so obviously you need to uh, bear that much increased dead weight for your foundation and whenever possible you can try to use the light weight material so basically you are going to reduce the dead weight of the component very good corrosive resistance impact resistance light in weight fatic resistance excellent durability reduced environmental toxicity easy of insulation electromagnetic neutrality 
and high stiffness. So because of these advantages, using FRP is very much suitable for civil engineering construction. Okay, so we decided to use the FRP and we have used both carbon and glass fiber. It's basically, we want to use this material for the pile foundation. So especially for the existing pile foundation, constructed pile foundation, where the pile capacity is not adequate, especially for the lateral capacity. So where we want to use this material as the additional component. So it should be tried with the wrapping the existing member. So accordingly, we want to see how far this material is fit for using pile wrapping process. And as we know that the pile is it's a underground structure. The pile needs to interact with the soil. So when the pile concrete material, when it interacts with the soil, how the resistance or how the interface resistance are mobilized between the pile and soil. And the same mechanism we supposed to resemble when you are using RP. So we need to study about the soil structure interaction. And the piles often being used under water. So when you use this particular FRP strengthened the material underwater construction, whether the durability aspect is satisfied, or there won't be any debonding effect between the pile and FRP wrapping. So that we want to ensure. And over and above, we want to see the complete mechanical characteristics of the FRP strengthened concrete. So that is what the the complete study is in the three-phase system. First, we have done the complete mechanical characterization in the laboratory. Um, start with a simple cube test to flexible test. And with respect to the effect of water, the weathering process, wetting drying process, how this material is having intactness with the concrete. And then when it, when it is interacting with the soil, how the soil structure inter interface is going to be affected, going to affect with respect to the wrapped concrete specimen, uh, third level. And fourth level is the complete or real field study with respect to the soil, real soil structure interaction, soil pile interaction under lateral load as well as cyclic lateral load. So this is the sequence of this particular presentation. So first we want to understand the complete uh, mechanical characteristics of the concrete. So for that, we have started with the cube test, cylindrical test, and the flexural test of this. And so as I mentioned, we have selected both the carbon and the glass fiber. So carbon fiber is a unidirectional fiber. And these are the characteristics of the carbon fiber. You can see here, it's a very high tensile strength and tensile modulus. The fiber tensile strength is about 3,500 Newton per millimeter squared, whereas the tensile modulus is uh, to like 85,000 Newton per millimeter, uh, millimeter squared. So very high tensile capacity class fiber, whereas, uh, sorry, carbon fiber. Class fiber, we have taken both the unidirectional and bidirectional. And you can, you can also have a look of this. Uh, it is almost one third of it, but you can see here, uh, the cost of uh, glass fiber is much, much lesser than the cost of carbon fiber. So carbon, almost 10 times higher the cost. Carbon fiber is 10 times higher than the glass fiber. So economical wise, using glass fiber is very cheaper than carbon fiber. But you can also see here, we are able to gaining the strength uh, instead of one layer, if you provide two, three layers, probably we can able to reach close to the carbon fiber with the, the cost increased uh, almost is reduced by seven times in case if you are using only glass fiber. But not bad, still we are getting very good uh, tensile capacity as well as tensile modulus. And so basically we are trying to use this material, this concrete for foundation, pile foundation. So minimum grade of concrete we have taken M30 grade. So this is a mixing proportion for this M30 grade concrete. And the second important aspect is the whole process, the strength of mobilization is completely governed by 
the binding material. So here the binding material, what we have used is a network of 30 and network of 40 saturated. So this is a primer. A network of 30 is a primer and network of uh, 4, 10 is the saturated. So these, these two has to be mixed in a particular proportion and that has to be used as a binding material. So the whole process, the whole strength is completely governed by what we are having, the binding. So the process has been started with uh, like this. So basically, as I mentioned, our intention is to get the enhanced lateral capacity of the pile. So as we know that, when you use the fiber filament perpendicular to the loading direction, normally the enhanced capacity is much higher than the parallel orientation. So just we want to see that, so carbon fiber is the unidirectional, but the glass fiber is both the unidirectional and bidirectional. So we want to see the complete uh, mechanical characteristics of this material when the fiber orientation has been changed. So that we have selected both parallel arrangement as well as perpendicular arrangement with respect to the compression test. So this exercise will have a clear idea about the real field load transfer mechanism in the real field analysis. So that is what we initially planned and accordingly the concrete was cast and we have used both the unidir unidirectional and bidirectional class fiber and uh, unidirectional carbon fiber, both the longitudinal that is a perpendicular to load and parallel to load. So these are the notations you can see, it's so unconfined concrete. And this is a unidirectional class fiber parallel orientation and this is a perpendicular. So we did the compressive strength test and fortunately we can see here the un unconfined concrete cube itself. We have decided the mix for M30, so got close to M40 grade of concrete, so well and good. So we did the strength test for various cases and you can see play and test. We have we have done enough test. Each trial we did three samples and the average values have been taken. You can look at here. Obviously, the carbon fiber is much superior than the glass fiber because you know that the tensile capacity of a carbon is carbon fiber is much higher than glass fiber. So that is what it has reflected. And using number of plies, when we increase the number of plies, capacity is also increasing. But overall, if you look at the improvement, almost the carbon fiber concrete with the perpendicular is giving improvement almost 61% increase than in the conventional concrete. But having a small amount of carbon fiber, a single layer increased minimum 20% than the conventional concrete. And increasing number of layers from single to double, minimum we are getting 50% improvement. So based on this statistical results, we have developed an equation for getting the compressive strength of concrete, uh, characteristic strength of concrete with FRB. So this is FRB strengthened uh, concrete uh, characteristic strength that can be estimated using this uh, empirical uh, statistical equation. So this equation has been developed based on these results. So 1.387 FCK, this is the conventional concrete, unconfined concrete characteristic strength. K1, K2 are the constant depends on the FRP material and fiber orientation and T, the nominal thickness of the FRP layers known to us and N is the number of layer. So likewise, we have just uh, measured value and uh, value estimator from this mathematical prediction and it's more or less, the error is less than 5%, so the equation is very well valid. So just we thought of developing an equation with the limited experimental experiment data what we have obtained. So cylindrical strength also 
in the same way we have done both parallel and perpendicular so circumferential direction and longitudinal direction and it's what notice is similar to that what we have seen in the compressive strength test and for compressive strength for a partly confined concrete uh, cylindrical persistence equation have been developed using the same similar manner and the error is also again less than 5% and then we have conducted the split tensile strength of FRB cylindrical sample and again same kind of observation you can see here the improvement is very high when you are using the concrete specimen especially in the circumferential direction against the load then we have conducted the flexural step strength test in the similar pattern and for the flexural strength of concrete and expected as like same using the carbon fiber is much higher than the class fiber and the orientation in the longitudinal direction is much higher than the circumferential direction and based on this data we have developed another equation for flexural strength and again this uh, validation of this equation with experimental data error all within the permissible limit and so using the cylindrical sample we have also obtained the modulus of elasticity of the concrete hanks modulus for various conditions and you can see here it is very well known that it is very similar to that the response the modulus is also increased with the carbon fiber with the circumferential direction it is expected one the improvement is 71% for single ply and 126% for double plies so again the modulus of hanks modulus for frp confined cylindrical samples can be obtained using this equation so please remember these equations are having the limitation with the experimental range so again this equation is also having a very good uh, correlation with the experimental results then as i mentioned so since we want to use this material underwater as well so we want to see whether there will be any debonding issues when it has been emerged in water for very period so that is what we have extended this study further completely this um, specimens both uh, cubes cylinder and uh, beam specimens were cast and placed under water uh, range from 1 to 3 months and again all these tests have been repeated and in fact after doing uh, i mean when it is merged emerged in water in fact is you are all very well known that initial initially the song concrete specimen will gain little bit strength because of this uh, complete uh, strength gaining with, with respect to the exothermic process and uh, we have also noticed a slight variation in increase in strength but our ultimate idea is to check whether there will be any issue related to debonding so we noticed that no debonding has happened even after 3 months of water emerged specimens so that has given a good sign that this material is very well used under water as well so we have conducted all the tests okay, and no wear strength reduction noticed good so the mechanical characteristics of the frp strength and concrete specimen is witnessed using frp is very well you can able to gain the strength of the concrete and even if the concrete is i mean frp wrapped specimen is uh, subjected to underwater keeping in the weathering process there won't be any negative impact you are material is intact you are able to get the required strength or in fact you are getting the strength slightly better than con conventional one and third the same material is going to be used underground so that means it has to be interact with the soil when the underground soil mass practically you may have different soil strata if you use those soil strata how much the interaction is going to affect the real behavior so that is what 
the study has ex extended to the interface behavior. So basically, the interface behavior, we started with a simple test. So as we are all very well known, in the interface, strength is purely governed by or controlled by the surface of the concrete, the surface of the member, the surface of the pile. So as we know that the pile insulation will lead to have a different state of surface in the real field. For example, if you are using in situ concrete, both cast in situ pile, you can have a very much, very highly undulated surface where your frictional capacity is very high. When you are using precast piles, precast driven piles, or precast board precast pile, a precast element will have a smoother surface. So obviously your resistance or the frictional resistance will be less. So we want to simulate this condition with respect to the effort because now the interaction is not between concrete and soil. Now the interaction between the FRP and the soil. So we want to see that interaction effect whether there will be any negative impact, whether there will be any reduction in the capacity, especially the actual capacity is governed by the frictional resistance of the pile. So that is very, very uh, important aspect, especially under seismic condition, where we are talking about the liquefiable soil, then how this capacity is going to be affected your pile performance. So that is what the next study is. So we have created extremely smooth surface and medium surface concrete and rough surface concrete and over and above you have a epoxy coated concrete so how these concrete specimens are going to interact with the soil that is the actual real field problem and over and above we are going to use frp over on this concrete and how that going to interact with the soil so that is what we extended the study so again the loading is with respect to the orientation of the fiber, whether we have to have a perpendicular orientation or parallel orientation or some inclination. Because the load, especially when you talk about a load, it may not be a pure lateral load. Sometimes it may be eccentric load with some inclination. Or the pile may have some inclination, especially when you talk about the racker piles, because the racker piles are more effective in uh, taking lateral load especially in the marine environment in the port and harbor structures our tracker piles are often used so we have an inclination so then how this fiber orientation is really going to going to be a matter for your soil structure interaction study so that is what we extended the study you can see here zero degree it is a parallel arrangement with respect to load 90 degrees is a perpendicular arrangement with respect to load. Here the load is a shear load. And 40 degree arrangement. So neither parallel nor perpendicular. So this is what we have selected in various combination. And we want to check which combination is a more, I mean, extremely good, extremely bad. So that is what we want to check. So we have used both the glass as well as carbon. And we did, we just measured the surface uh, sur uh, surface roughness using the roughness measuring device. And the smooth concrete surface is having a roughness is almost 0.62. So typically one is the ideal case roughness. It's a very high roughness. One is used to be the ideal one. And accordingly, if you see here, uh, smooth surface is having only 60% compared to the ideal one. Medium surface is almost 88%. A rough surface, this, this roughness is beyond the expected one, so close to 1.82. So we introduced purposefully, we introduced a very high roughness. And in fact, we witnessed that we could be able to get this much roughness when you are going with the board cast in stupid. Epoxy coated concrete is almost less than 50% of the ideal case. And very interestingly, when you look at these values, especially for the carbon fiber, the roughness is very high when the carbon filament roughness is giving a much more, sorry, glass fiber filament roughness is giving much more than the carbon fiber because the carbon fiber is much smoother than the 
class fiber and it is also with respect to the filament uh, orientation as well as the permanent uh, thickness as well the plumbed signing so these are the things is uh, very important as well so glass fiber is having much higher roughness than carbon fiber but carbon fiber also good not very bad if this fiber roughness is comparable with the conventional concrete roughness so the roughness measurement shows very clearly using glass fiber you can able to get very high frictional capacity than carbon but carbon fiber is as we know that superior in terms of the tensile capacity than the glass one so this has given a rough idea about the roughness of the surface surface roughness of the different combination then we did a simple direct shear test so normally the it is a very easy to conduct so as we know that uh, your failure plane is always a predetermined failure horizontal failure plane in the direct shear test so we want to know the resistance only in the interface so you can very well use a concrete specimen at the bottom box and the top one is filled with the soil and you can very well uh, have this interface effect by using a different materials whether it is a steel concrete or timber whatever your foundation material can be used and uh, use this shear box can measure what will be the actual shear resistance mobilized between soil and the pipe so, so this is the real interaction between these two construction materials so that is what we did so initially we have taken both the sand and gravel and later we have extended with the silty and clay sand so we have taken sand with the, both well graded as well as poorly graded and gravel both well graded and poorly graded as we know that the poorly graded will be having less strength than the well graded so that is what we have noticed so this is the overall characteristics of the uh, sand and we have also taken clay sand and this is the overall characteristics of the clay sand and look at here when we use sand interactive with various material like uh, carbon and glass fiber with various roughness and how the interfriction angle is mobilized that it we have estimated and obviously poorly graded soil is having less internal friction than the well graded soil almost you can see here almost um, two angle of internal friction you have a difference between these two and the roughness smooth surface there is a slight reduction almost to 4 degrees reduction medium is 2 uh, and the rough surface this is what interestingly greater than the angle of internal friction of the soil but normally we won't use the angle of internal friction of the angle of wall friction is more than angle of internal friction even is 2911 uh, give a guideline angle of internal wall friction can be used as angle of internal friction delta is equal to 5 so that is a maximum value but interestingly if the roughness is very high we have a chance of getting more than angle of internal friction so this is another important aspect but uh, i mean it's uh, really we may not be knowing what exact surface we are creating at the uh, below the ground so safe side we always stick with the, the angle of internal friction if at all we are using some sort of uh, liners then there will be a drastic reduction in the wall friction so accordingly the code says that you have to reduce by 2/3 of angle of internal friction so look at the values of uh, glass fiber and carbon fiber orientation so as expected there will be a slight reduction in the capacity angle of wall uh, in the wall friction capacity it is expected one but look at the overall it is uh, comparable with comparable with uh, the conventional concrete so this is what first we extended so so the corresponding roughness with respect to the interface friction and then for gravelly soil also so basically gravel is superior than sand it will it will get much more wall friction and this is also almost similar to that what we have seen for sandy soil we have a good sign that uh, there will not be much reduction and for 
the conventional soil the field soil clay is sand also estimated and got a good sign so this is a complete uh, stress strain response with respect to various conditions and finally this is what the shear modulus has been developed with respect to roughness various roughness condition so well graded soil obviously you'll have a very good shear modulus than the poorly graded soil and you can see here sandy soil and gravelly soil developed and based on that the shear modulus equation have been developed a plus b times r a so we have introduced a factor roughness factor to estimate a shear modulus in terms of the constant a and b okay so initial mechanical behavior also witnessed frp is showing good strength and the durability as well good and the interface interface frictional mobilization also good then we really wanted to do wanted to use this material for the existing pile how this existing pile strength is going to improve with the frp strengthening aspect that is what our next study so before moving to the study you should know a little bit about the pile response especially in the lateral load and uh, most of you are very much aware of the pile response. Just for clarity, I'll explain. Basically, we'll have a two kind of response. One is a short pile response, and the other one is a long pile. Short pile is something is a, simply nothing but a short rigid body motion. So when you have a load, the load will simply rotate the pile. So it is a simple rigid body motion. So you can see the pile will not bend. Rather, it will simply rotate. So that means the failure is mainly governed by the soil resistance. If the soil resistance is less, obviously the pile is subject to rotation. So this has happened in a free headed pile. In case the pile head is fixed at the top, normally in practice you will have a fixed head because you have a mass at the pile top. So it will act as a fixed head. So the fixed head will have a simple translation. So these two are a simple rigid body motion. So the response is mainly governed by the resistance of the soil. Whereas in a long flexible pile, so the long pile, short pile will be decided with respect to the soil pile stiffness. So th there is a term is called relative stiffness. Based on the relative stiffness, the, whether the pile will act as a short pile or long pile, that will be decided. So in case of long pile, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, you are applying huge lateral load. So you have a very high lateral res resistance. As we know that the lateral resistance is going to increase with respect to depth linearly the lateral resistance is basically a passive resistance so increasing step the passive resistance will be more so since you are you are increasing depth going to increase the lateral resistance your pile is going to crack somewhere where you are getting the maximum bending moment this is called a point of fixity so where you are getting the plastic hinge so this is what so in the long pile Mainly the pile failure is decided by the material of the pile. In short pile, the soil resistance is going to be decided. So in case of fixed heated pile, you have a plastic hinge both the top where you have a pile cap and pile junction as well as somewhere at below the ground level where you have the maximum moment. So this is the classical response of the pile under lateral load. So normally we will be using long flexible pile in the field. Very rarely we will be using short pile. Okay. So short pile may be used for a very lightly loaded structure and especially for uh, some some sort of uh, like um, UVP panel, a simple structure where you have a, a small supporting system with the piles. Short piles could be used. So other than generally we we are using a long piles so we we'll, let us concentrate more on long pile so basically we do want to use the long pile response we want to see the long pile response so we have decided to cast the long pile in the field itself and we want to do the complete uh, loading and we want to see the complete response with respect to wrapped rc piles so for that we have selected two 30 millimeter diameter pile with the four meter length out of which three meter below the ground, one meter above the ground. And basically we want to do board castings to pile. And 
the spacing between the piles, we have selected three times the pile diameter. Accordingly, it's one eight meter. And the center pile is just as pile is almost one point five meter. So we have done the boring using a tractor mounder auger rig, and the boring was done. And every one meter samples was collected, and SPT test was done, collected representative samples, and samples were analyzed. And the location one, you can see almost the same uh, three meter depth, almost the same soil characteristics. Soil comes under clay sand. And we have a significant value of SPT, the soil classified under medium 10 soil, SPT in value 26 to 31 with respect to depth. And you can see here the soil is having significant amount of fine contents. So passing 75 micron is 49, 44, 41. So almost the soil is pure C phase soil. You'll have both C as well as phi influence. So that is a very uh, rare to study this kind of soil. In fact, for this kind of soil, there is no standard design procedure. So, so we have selected such a site where we want to give both the effect, C and phi effect. This is site two location, almost the same as site one with a slight variation in the fine content. Again, it is clove, again, grouped as a clay sand. So these are the materials to be used for test pile. We have used, again, M30 grid of concrete, longitudinal for six numbers, eight millimeter diameter, I six millimeter, and this is spacing between the ties. Bit of concrete uh, FE4, sorry, steel FE409, concrete grid uh, cover thickness is 40 millimeter as per the coder requirements. For the test pile, it's a 450 millimeter diameter of pile. Eight numbers of 12 meter diameter and FE415 and 50 millimeter. So this is site one location. Concreting was done, enough curing was given. And you can see here, after that, we have also a perfect wrapping. We have gone through this uh, pilot test as per IS uh, 2911. Load was supplied at 0.85 meter above the ground level. Uh, this is the eccentric loading, eccentric distance, and deflections was measured at various locations. And basically, we were interested to get the deflection at the ground level. Ground level deflection will be correlated to get the capacity of the pipe. So this is what we did in the lateral loop. And various combinations we have tested like a longitudinal arrangement and a circumferential arrangement, both carbon and class fiber with the bi-directional class Y. So these are the different notations. C means circumferential direction. L means longitudinal direction. So longitudinal direction means it will be, the flamen will be placed in the vertical direction where load is a perpendicular, sorry, horizontal direction. So load is always a perpendicular to the plummet. In the circumferential direction, it will be circumferential orientation. So load is also in the same direction. So it will act as a parallel direction. So that is what we want to see the effect of both the, the direction of the plummet. <clears throat> so this is the typical load deflection pattern for all the cases. The bottommost one is uh, unconfined pile, And the top one is uh, unidirectional class uh, carbon fiber with the longitudinal direction. So you can see here, so very high capacity enhancement with respect to FR wrapping. And this is the final capacity. The capacity normally estimated using the IS criteria. The criteria, there are two criteria we need to evaluate. And the minimum one will be taken as the capacity of the file. The first criteria is the 50% of the final load at which the total displacement increases to five millimeter and final load at which the total displacement is corresponding to five millimeter and using these two criteria it has been taken and the final safe load will be taken always governed by the 50 percent of the 
load corresponding to 12 millimeter displacement has been taken as the minimum one. So accordingly, the file capacity has been estimated. So you can see here the variation of um, increment in the file capacity, uh, irrespective of the file uh, type of uh, FRP. So minimum, you are getting almost close to 20% enhancement. If you are using carbon fiber with the parallel arrangement, uh, sorry, perpendicular arrangement, that is the longitudinal arrangement, you are able to get as much as 75% improvement in the capacity. So then we extended this study to see the crack pattern of the ground and the formation of gap between the soil and pipe. And in fact, we have excavated and we have seen the actual depth of crack where we are assuming the theoretical depth of fixity. And the theoretical depth of fixity, what we have estimated, and it has been correlated with the actual depth of fixity where we got the crack. So the unconfined file, the crack is 1.3 times the diameter, whereas wrapped files, the depth of fixity has been increased. So you can see here the class of carbon fiber with the longitudinal direction. You have as much as close to three times the pile diameter. That means you are gaining very high strength capacity. That means the moment of resistance of the section is very much increased for having a carbon fiber wrapping. So the study is further extended with the cyclic load. The same notations have been used. Longitudinal direction, circumferential direction, and the pi directional class fiber. So you can clearly see that the load has less. Basically, we have applied the incremental load. So first, as we know that, first loading will be 20% of the estimated load. So the first 20% load will be applied as a first load increment. Then unloading will be done. Then the reloading will be done for the next 20 increment. So 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, 100. So likewise, the load increment has been taken with respect to the actual estimated load of the pile. So this is the classical hysteric loops of this unconfined pile. So you can see here, so number of cycles we have gone up to eight. And this is the corresponding peak loads. And uh, using the criteria, the capacity has been estimated for the lateral displacement for each load increment. So the stiffness of the pile is estimated. You can see here the stiffness is so 0.8 kilogram per millimeter for the first load increment. The stiffness is, look at here, the, this is called the stiffness the degradation is taking place with respect to number of cycle. When we are in the eighth cycle, almost the stiffness has been reduced by 55. You can see here stiffness degradation. In the eighth cycle, the stiffness degradation almost 50% of the actual stiffness of the soil pile system. And the energy dissipation and the cumulative energy dissipation has been calculated. So these are all the very important aspects when you talk about earthquake load. Okay, the energy dissipation as well as the stiffness degradation. To some extent, we are we are bringing these results close to the uh, earthquake event because the earthquake is even this basically subject to the lateral load and uh, it is a to one for motion so when the piles are subject to two one for motion how the stiffness uh, degradation is going to take place uh, what will be the number of cycles it can be with time with respect to that. so that is what the study is going to you can see here so this is the unidirectional fiber direction is uh, unidirectional and class fiber in the longitudinal arrangement. So as we know that the longitudinal arrangement is better than the circumferential arrangement. And this is pertaining to the glass fiber. You can see here, we are talking about the stiffness uh, degradation. You can see here the stiffness degradation is almost 50% degradation is close to 12th cycle or even it is better. Cycle. 
So unconventional, unconfined pyration close to 50%. So that shows very clearly, even under seismic event, the wrapped fibers will have a very good strength, even it can withstand more number of cycles, and the swiftness degradation is not as like the unconfined pipes. And similarly for the circumferential direction, it is not as appreciable than like your longitudinal direction. So you are even just ninth cycle itself, the stiffness degradation is taken 50% as almost close to the unconfined pile. So where unconfined pilots stiffness degradation is taken place 50% uh, on the eighth cycle, whereas in case of class 5 over in the circumferential direction is close to nine cycle, just one cycle is improvement than the unconfined pile. Whereas in the glass fiber in the bidirectional arrangement, it is almost too close to that uh, longitudinal arrangement because you know that the bidirectional arrangement, the circumferential arrangement is ineffective, where the longitudinal arrangement is effective. But a pure longitudinal uh, arrangement we have gone up to 12th cycle. So where the bidirectional arrangement is almost close to the longitudinal direction arrangement of 50% degradation on 11th cycle. So whereas in case of carbon fiber, longitudinal direction, so this is the superior one. Carbon fiber is superior than the glass fiber and the longitudinal arrangement is much efficient than taking the load than the circumferential direction arrangement. So you can see here, even almost 13th cycle, the degradation is close to 50 and the number of cycles gone up to 14 cycles before it's failed. This has given a complete picture of this uh, earthquake resistance of this kind of FRP strength uh, specimen piles under two and pro motion. We have a very good efficiency, very good um, energy dissipation capacity and um, especially for carbon fiber in the longitudinal direction. So these things, even it is in the circumferential direction, is not as appreciable than the longitudinal direction, but it is better than the conventional pile. And the 50% energy dissipation is close to uh, eight cycles, almost the same as the conventional pile or the class fiber in the circumferential direction. So one thing is very clear when you are talking about, especially on the earthquake motion, Providing the fiber in the circumferential direction is inefficient. You have an, it is not efficiently working. So you have to place the fiber in the longitudinal direction. So we, since the earthquake force essentially on the lateral load, horizontal load, so we need to place this fiber in the vertical direction. So this is the overall comparison. And accordingly, the load deflection pattern was taken and the capacity has been arrived. And under cyclic load also, you have a great improvement in the capacity. You can look at here, a minimum 17% and maximum 66% improvement. So this was almost 80% in case of a static. Under lateral load, cyclic lateral load, it is close to 20% reduction compared to the static load. But still, it is much better than the conventional pile, unconfined pile. So we have a huge strength improvement enhancement. So failure patterns was also studied under cyclic load. As expected, the cyclic load pattern is slightly higher than, that means the occurrence of failure is slightly taking earlier than the static load, as expected, because the strength degradation is taking place under cyclic load. Then we have gone, the, so far we were talking about the strengthening. We have also gone to the retrofitting. So retrofitting was done where the piles were subjected to almost 85% of the ultimate load. So ultimate load we have theoretically estimated. That theoretically estimated, 85% as a theoretically estimated ultimate load has been applied on the pile. So to some extent we fail the pile to close to the 85% of the ultimate load. Then the wrapping was done. Then the test was conducted. So you can see here all these piles were already subjected to 85% of the ultimate load. So close to the failure. Then again, the same process has been re uh, re repeated. Strengthening was done. And the tests have been conducted. So you can see here, uh, if you do noticed closely that uh, strengthened pile response, load deflection response, and retrofitted pile road 
deflection response the bandwidth the gap between these responses is slightly higher in case of strengthened pile where the strength enhancement is very high whereas the retrofitted pile the gap between these files are very very minimal so there will be slight strength increment because the pile is already subjected to 85% of the ultimate load it is a verge of failure where the piles are verge of failure then we want to bring back the capacity of the pile for that we have used the frp we have wrapped the frp so that somehow we are able to bring back the capacity you can see the capacity of the pile look at here this is actual capacity of the pile the original pile without any distress where these files how we loaded up to 85% of the ultimate load then we did the retrofitting using frp then we did uh, when then we applied the load and we got the response in the load look at here these loads are almost slightly better than the conventional pile unconfined pile the original pile so uh, this is the this is what our intention is actually this 12.3 12 12.13 uh, kilonewton load is the actual pile load to some way this pile has extended or experienced with this much load 12 kilonewton or slightly less than 12 kilonewton that means this 12 kilonewton is just a safe load what we are talking about the ultimate load so uh, here you can see that this are the ultimate load so uh, let us say 80, 28 kilonewton is the ultimate load. We have applied almost close to 28 kilonewton. So maybe uh, just 85% of this 28 kilonewton. So that means we forcefully fail the pile to the ultimate level. Then we want to bring back the capacity. That is what we did. Okay. So after retrofitting, we are able to bring back the safe load of 12 kilonewton or slightly more than that so you can see here even by using class fiber with the circumferential direction we are able to get five percent increment in the failed pile so that means that a retrofitted pile so using glass fiber carbon fiber you have slightly higher capacity almost to 26 percent than the actual conversion so that very clearly shows this particular frp strengthening process is very well very well used where your files are failed that means a failed under repairable condition where it has reached to the repairable condition you can able to retrofit those kind of files using this frp method so that is what so you can see here all the failure pattern is measured and the depth of fixity again measured for all the cases as you can see here not much appreciable improvement in the depth of fixity because already the pile how displaced a lot So with these things, we finally, we want to develop a design chart considering the load deflection pattern. So we, had, we got a very good experience with the load deflection pattern of this FRP strengthened pile. So that we want to extend further to get the bending response. So the bending response, theoretically, we have estimated using the simple uh, recent matlock elastic process. And these are the very well known uh, given equations given by recent matlock to develop a different response of the pile using various parameters. Especially the parameter T, relative stiffness, is very important. So using that relative stiffness factor and the flexural rigidity of pile and the relative stiffness factor will decide the complete response of the pile for various conditions, so flexion, slope, movement, and shear. So finally, this is what using the conditions, the deflection according to free headed pile. We have developed the pile deflection, pile slope, pile bending moment and shear, and finally the soil reaction. So basically the soil reaction and the deflection is the one going to decide about the POE response. So any laterally loaded piles, we need to develop a POE response. Once the POE response has been developed, using that, you can able to easily design the pile for any particular case. That is what our intention. Using this response, we were trying to do a design chart. So Brahms has already given the design chart, dimensional design chart for cohesive soil and cohesive soil separately. 
It's a very classical design procedure is available. Prompts is given. He has given in 1964 itself for cohesive soil and coastal soil. But no design equations is, uh, equations are available combine both the sea phase soil condition. That is what we developed in this case. So this is the critical, I mean, typical design chart. Uh, load moment interaction curve. So we developed a more uh, load moment interaction curve. Suppose we assume the soil is a granular soil, coastal soil. So this is a classical design chart given by Brahms for ultimate load versus ultimate moment. So this ultimate load is normalized by the passive resistance. It's a KP is a passive resistance coefficient. D is the diameter of the pipe. Gamma is the density of the soil. This is a non-dimensional factor for load. And this is a non-dimensional factor for the moment. M is the ultimate moment. KP is the passive resistance coefficient. D is the diameter of the pile. Gamma is the density and unit weight of the soil. So according to this, our soil condition and the moment load what we obtain, when you use the Brahms chart, so this is the interaction line. Uh, yellow is the interaction line. So ours is the experimental result slightly higher than the Brahms design chart. This is for granular soil. Suppose we assume the soil is a cohesive soil. This is the interaction curve between load and moment. U by CD squared is a non-dimensional factor for load. And MU by CD cube, uh, CD cube is the non-dimensional factor for moment. So here, the Brahms is slightly higher than the experimental result. So it's very clearly so that the Brahms variation is varying between the experimental results considering the C value as well as phi value. So we introduced the same chart considering both the C phi value. So accordingly, the non-dimensional coefficient of PU by KP CD, CD squared, we introduced C as well here. So KP is including the friction angle. 1 minus 1 plus sine phi by 1, mi 1 minus sine phi. It's a passive earth pressure coefficient. C is the cohesive force. So D is the diameter of the pi. So we introduced both the load as well as moment, considering both the C phi effect. And that shows very clearly the interaction curve. You can see here, the bottommost one is a unconfined pi. And uh, yellow is glass fiber. And the blue one is carbon fiber. So this is the final design chart we developed based on the FRP strength and five. So how to use this design chart? A small illustration. Suppose you have a, a concrete pile of 450 millimeter diameter, 15 meter long is installed in the soil. First, determine the ultimate load that can be applied on the pile with the, the ultimate moment of 50 kilonewton meter. This is unconfined pile, ultimate load. So three cases we can consider. Suppose the load. We want to estimate the load for the applied moment. So ultimate moment is 50 kilonewton meter. For this load, what will be the corresponding load, the PU we want to estimate. So this is a PU, so according to that, so using suitable parameter, suppose you assume this value, E is a concrete 20 kilonewton per meter square, angle of friction 30, closing strength is 20 kilonewton per meter square, coefficient of circular modulus, so corresponding to that soil, let us say it is 100, 10 into 10 power 6 Newton per meter cube. So using this value, first you have to calculate relative stiffness. The relative stiffness is equal to fifth root of Ei by NH. So where Es is the flexural stiffness of the pile, and the NH is the subgrade modulus. So Ea you can calculate. I is the moment of energy of the pile section. It is a 450 millimeter diameter pile. So phi d4, phi d4 by 64. So calculate a moment of inertia. E is known, so Ea is known. So that Ea by NH, so NH value is already known. So calculating this T is 1.32 meter. So the relative stiffness factor is 1.32 meter. So as we know that the relative stiffness factor is L is five times the relative stiffness factor. It is a 6.6 .6 meter, where actual L is 15 meter. So the pile is actually long flexible pile. So the, the design procedure is valid. You can use and you can estimate. <clears throat> Step to calculate the ultimate lateral resistance of the pile. MU by KPCD cube, where MU is given, which is a 50 kilonewton meter. 
And KP, typically, if, uh, so high value is 30. If you use 1 plus sine phi, it would be 1 minus sine phi. The KP value is 3. C is the quotient force is 200 kilometer per meter square. And D cube is a 0 0.3, 0 0.45 millimeter. Sorry, 0.45 meter cube. So this value is 0.91. Now, what the 0.91, whatever you have estimated, this is in the x-axis, 0.91, somewhere here. But this 0.91, You can get the current. If I'm using unconfined pi, P u by kp cd squared is equal to 0.21. So where p is equal to, you can multiply with all the parameter 0.25 into 3 into c, 200 into 0.25 squared. So this is 25.52 kN. In case class 5 bird strength into pi, it is 29.1 kN. And carbon fiber strength and pile is 32.21. So we can clearly see that from this illustration, it is concluded that the ultimate lateral resistance is increased by about 14% when the pile is confined with the class fiber mat, whereas it is increased almost 26% with the carbon fiber mat. So two things I can conclude from this uh, result. Suppose your pile, what originally you have decided for 25 kN as a capacity, but you are not able to achieve this 25 kN capacity, then by using this process, either class fiber or carbon fiber, when you are using, we are able to gaining almost 14% to 26%. Suppose your required capacity is, let us say, 32 kN. So we want to get, you have only 25 kN, where your required capacity is 32 kN, then you can use a carbon fiber to bring your capacity to 32 kN. And as I mentioned in the beginning, carbon fiber is slightly, I mean, much costlier than class fiber. Sometime using for all the project of, it may not be affordable. Then we can think of using multi layers of class fiber alone. In, in terms of this is single layers giving 29. Unfortunately, multi layer we have not tried in the field, but we have very well tried in the laboratory for various combinations. So probably if it is. So the, the same linear incremental, it will be two times. So accordingly, you can see here, it will reach to the 30 kN. So depending upon your requirement, you have to select a suitable type of uh, uh, FRB, and you can decide. And other way around, suppose you may also think of using, you may have some constraint. You, you can't go for a large diameter pipe where you, have, you don't have a... Uh, I mean, you can't say that you don't have equipment for do that. But to some extent, you want to confine your pile diameter. You have some other field constraints. So in that case, you can use the same lesser diameter pile where you'll be getting only 25 kN. But your capacity, required capacity is 32. Keep the same diameter. Use FRP. Bring your capacity 25 to 32. So this is what the illustration witnessed. Either way, you can use. If it is an existing pile where you have a lateral capacity, inadequacy in the lateral capacity, use this material, bring the lateral capacity. Or whether you are going for a new construction where you have a constraint, a constraint with respect to the diameter, then have the same diameter, use the FRB, get the strength. So these are the two. And sometimes having reducing the diameter will have a lot of savings in your money as well time. So considering those things, this could be an, uh, another option for your strength enhancement. So this complete study is available in uh, AAC to all in performance of constructive facilities. I mean, you can further readings, you can check these papers. Thank you. We will come to the end. If you have any questions, please. So thank you, Muthukumaran sir, for your uh, excellent presentation. So let us move on to the question and answer session. So participants, if you have any questions, sir, you can just post your questions in the chat box, or you can unmute, unmute yourself and you can uh, ask the questions to Dr. Gay
Any questions in the chat box? No question. No, no questions, sir. No questions. Yeah. You can directly ask the question. You can unmute your no. mic. Good afternoon, sir. No. Yes, please. Hello. Your audio is audio. It's durability, sir. It's Yes, sir. What about durability of FRD, sir? Then, then other structure. I'm not clear with your question. Please, once so again. He's asking sir, what about durability, sir? Durability. If long la lasting. Nah. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Durability. Yeah, of course, you have a certain issue related with uh, uh, durability, especially the. Um, it is prone to have a uh, ultraviolet or uh, uh, continuous. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, weathering process. Temperature, sir, so far. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, you might have seen that in the earlier study, what under when it is permanently under water, but what we yes, see the only is three months is not really a uh, longevity for uh, the fifty years or, or seventy five years of structure. But still, yes, sir. Uh, we can have a accelerated uh, kind of uh, durability aspect. But yes. I believe that if it is commonly used under water, there will not be any problem. And especially the yeah, it's un underwater, sir. It is it's okay, sir. But uh, other than ex in exposure condition, there is some limitation, doubt. There is some confusion to me. That's why I was. Yeah, fine. Yeah, underwater as well as underground is absolutely fine. But uh, when yes. it is exposed with the open exposure. environment, yeah, yeah, definitely you will have an issue. So we need to uh, look at that also. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Any other question? I think there are no more questions, sir. So if there are no more questions, sir, so I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Muthukumaran, so for his uh, complete presentation on uh, examples and files. Hello. And, uh, Hello. So you have some questions, sir, Pondurang, sir? Hi, yes. yeah, please. Uh, actually, you have tested uh, for uh, lateral load files. But uh, yeah. during earthquake, load is not a point load is acting, uniformly distributed acting. So what is the what will be the behavior of pile under uh, earthquake load? I'm not very clear with your question. Could you please uh, repeat again? Ha, ha. Uh, so you have tested experimentally for lateral load piles. Yes. Yes. But yes. Uh, during earthquake, uh, point load uh, uh, on a pile load is not acting laterally, but uh, uniformly uh, force is acting on piles. So what yes. will be the behavioral difference? Yeah, fine, fine. Actually, that, that is what I explained in the beginning. When you talk about the earthquake load, especially uh, where you have a liquefiable soil, the soil will, uh, I mean, the complete soil will move on the pile. So it will create additional lateral thrust. So that loading is completely different, what we call it as a passive loading. But this uh, present study is only for active loading. So under earthquake load, so where you are considering the, your critical load as a point load, it, it I mean, strictly speaking, it will not act as a point load. It will act as a throughout the pile with respect to only the liquefiable layer or the layer where the layer is subjected to movement. OK, so that we have to simplify and acting. We are applying as a point load at the top. It is not exactly resembling the earthquake uh, loading. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, thank you. So I emphasized only with the number of cycles, not an actual earthquake load. So if you have a to and fro motion, what will be the strength of degradation? Only that particular aspect we studied, not complete earthquake. Then we need to do a complete dynamic analysis. Correct, correct, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So any more questions? So I think there are no more questions, sir. So 
so thank you so much dr mutakumaran sir so for your uh, uh, complete and uh, an excellent presentation on uh, the experimental investigation of uh, rcc piles under the lateral loads so it was a very useful session so thank you so much for your uh, session so on behalf of all the participants present here so i can't be missing sir thanks to you sir so thank you thank you thank you so much for giving me this opportunity thank you all the participants for your present hearing my talk thank you thank sir. you thank you everyone